Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to fix your Nintendo Wii if it no longer shows any display on TV and instead you get a black screen as shown here. The power and reset button would also not respond as it normally would. The culprit of this issue in most cases is a bad Bluetooth chip and I'm going to be showing you how to replace that in this tutorial. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. FastTechStore.com carries all Nintendo Wii parts. Check the links in the description box and the pinned comment. All parts purchased from FastTechStore.com include a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. Use coupon code YouTube for a discount. To get to this chip, we need to partially disassemble the Wii. We're gonna need a Fast Tech Pro Toolkit, links in the description box and pinned comment. And we're gonna grab a Y bit, which is this bit right here. And now we can choose to hand turn screws, or if you're a boss like myself, you can grab yourself a Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver that'll save you a lot of time. We're also gonna grab this metal pry tool and a Phillips bit. At the bottom of the console, there are some stickers that are hiding some screws. We need to remove them. To preserve the stickers and the rubber feet, I'm gonna use sticker paper. There's some more on this side. On this side of the console, there's usually two panels we have to remove. This one, and there's usually one here which is missing. Now we're gonna hook up a size triple zero Phillips on our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit and remove the following screws. Now we can pull up on this plastic trim and there are some more Phillips screws that we have to remove. These ones are size zero. With those Phillips screws removed, now we need to switch to a Y bit and remove the following screws. There are more Y screws on this side. This screw is sometimes also known as a tri-point or a tri-wing. On this side, there are more screws we have to remove. This one here is a Y. Now we must switch back to a Phillips bit and remove the rest of these screws. This screw here is for the date and time battery. And once removed, there's gonna be another screw hiding underneath, which is a Y. So we must switch again. Now the faceplate assembly can be removed like this. There's a cable connector underneath that we must remove. I grab both wires at the same time, slowly wiggle and pull out. You wanna take your time with this, as this connector can be easily broken. Now let's pull on this side of the case and it will come off. Now let's switch back to a Phillips bit as there are more Phillips screws on the disk drive we have to remove. This metal piece is gonna have to be removed by lifting it up. Now there are those four Phillips screws on the disk drive that we must remove.
Now we're going to turn the disk drive over like the page of a book. This power cable is tucked in here and must be pulled out. Now the connectors must be removed. This one's for the data ribbon cable. There's a clip that we must release to pull it out and this one simply pulls out. Next, these Phillips screws must be removed. Now we're going to lift up this piece and there's this nut that's going to fall out. A lot of you are going to be wondering where this came out from and this is where it comes out from. This is where the CMOS battery cover screws in. Next, these two screws must come out. Now we gotta get all these other screws out that we have to remove that I mentioned earlier. Now we can lift up this back plate which will give us access to the faulty Bluetooth module. Once you have it this high, you can lift up the Bluetooth module like this. It's connected with a modular connector. Very easy to remove. I'm assuming you're watching this video because you need a replacement Bluetooth module. And if you want one, head over to FastTechStore.com since ours come with a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. Check the links below. Now we can simply line up our replacement Bluetooth board from FastTechStore.com and push it down as shown here. The connector lines up from the top and then you can push it into place. And you should feel it click into position like this. Before reassembly, we should always test our work. So I plug in a power cable and a video cable and I turn on the Wii. And it looks like we have video output. This fix worked. Now time for reassembly. This long Phillips screw goes in here. These shorter Phillips silver screws go in the following places. One of them goes behind this cable here. Now this black piece of plastic goes on like this. These antenna wires have to be routed through here like this. This is important otherwise these antenna wires could get pinched. This silver nut that I brought up during this assembly goes in here. This is where the CMOS battery screws in. These black Phillips screws go in the following places. One more silver Phillips screw goes here. 
Now it's time to install the disk drive back in. This clip must be lifted, this ribbon cable must be inserted like this, and the clip pushed down. The power cable simply plugs in. This part of the power cable must be tucked in the console. We're going to put the disk drive into position, and then these Phillips screws go in the following places. Now we're going to put on this piece, which goes on like this. Next, this part of the case goes on like this. These silver Phillips screws go in the following places. These Y head screws go in the following places. These Y screws, same as the previous ones, go in the following places. Now let's turn the Wii over and one of these Y screws goes in here. Now we're going to install the faceplate on and this connector has to go in. Now let's line up the faceplate like this. And on this side, there's another Y screw that goes in here. On this side, these black Y screws go in the following places. Now it's time to switch to a Phillips bit for the remaining Phillips screws. The CMOS battery and its housing goes in like this. These two silver Phillips screws go here and here. Now there should be two different types of Phillips screws remaining. Shorter ones and longer ones. One of the long screws goes here. Now let's flip the console over one more time and you should have these screws remaining. This trim goes on like this. The left side slides in. Take note of that. And then we're going to push it in place. You should hear it click. The longest one of these screws, this one, goes in here. And the other two go in here and here. Now we must reinstall the rubber feet and the stickers that I very professionally preserved. Now it's time to install this cover back on. Usually there should be two, but this Wii only has one. Now this Wii is fully reassembled and ready for final testing. Let's plug it in and fire it up.
This time, instead of just a black screen, we're getting a black screen with text, which is a good sign. And here's the Wii's home menu, and looks like we have another successful repair from Fastech. Fasttechstore.com carries all Nintendo Wii parts, including Bluetooth boards, cases, disk drives, motherboards, and more. Check the links in the description box and the top comment, and use coupon code YouTube for a discount. This is Shiroz from Fasttech signing out, and I'll see you in the next one.